All right. Well, last night was that Transition NXT show. That. Welcome back. But night was that uh, last night was the NXT show, and uh, I had a lot of thoughts about it. You know, there were two things. It was a show, but it was also a show in the apex. And I think there were people that disliked the apex a lot more than I did. I do feel that if you're running TV every single week in the same building, uh, that would be, uh, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What happened? Where'd I drop off at? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention, so it's hard to tell. <laughs> now you finish your sentence and you died. <laughs> anyway, I feel that if you're running a, uh, <laughs> I hope my life is like that. I uh, just want to get that last word in. I think if they're running, right. you know, a certain building every single week for their their TV, I mean, it's hard when you go somewhere else for the big blow off, because all the fans that are there every week are like, you know, they're invested in the characters, they're invested in the storylines and everything, and then you you take it away from them. Now, if you're taking it away from them to run a you know twelve thousand seat building on a WrestleMania weekend, well, that's cool. You gotta expect that. But when you when you move, like you're already running like a, a 500 seat building or whatever, and then it's time for the big you know big show, and you move it to a different 500 seat building, uh, 2,000 miles away, you know I I watched it and it felt to me like this was not really an NXT crowd. They had they had 700 people in there, they comped 400, you know media UFC people and et cetera et cetera. And then the remaining tickets were like, you know, two hundred fifty dollars or something like that. I had, I had a friend who the day of the show they were like, yeah, "Should I go to the uh, NXT show?" And I was like, "Sure, it's probably gonna be fun." They were like, "It's two hundred fifty dollars for the Apex." They didn't go. So uh, there was a deal where like if you paid for these you know expensive VIP tickets, you did get some food and stuff like that. But still, it's like people there insist that it was an NXT crowd. But, brother, I watched it with my own two eyes. Like, it yeah. just wasn't. I mean, no. they didn't get into it nearly like they get into it at the uh, Performance Center. And it's not like you put an extra 10,000 people in there. I think the show would have been miles and miles better at the WWE Performance Center with the WWE people filming and the WWE fans there and the whole nine yards. I mean, that's my thought about the Apex. I, I think that they're going to run again. They're probably going to try to run more frequently. I'm sure they probably think, well, you know, you got to do it and you got to keep doing it and you got to build it up. First time is always going to be the first time or whatever. But I do not think that the initial run at the UFC Apex I could consider a success. I don't know if they were looking for a home run. I think they just wanted to be solidly on base and they did that. You know, I'm sure they had big expectations when they put the tickets on sale and everything, but... This, to me, felt like, okay, a bunch of people are, are coming in a couple hours away from L.A., and they want to go come see this thing, a bunch of people from Endeavor, and you get a bunch of UFC people and this and that, and there's no way it could have been a pure NXT crowd because, number one, you priced a lot of people out of it, and number two, you had all those other people that were coming in late and leaving early because they just wanted to be there for the first event at UFC Apex. That That's what it was about. It was about everything other than really professional wrestling except for what was going on in the ring. And it was to me to set up coming back with them in the future for a WWE show, branded show, that they can make special and have really high ticket prices for. And I think that's kind of what it was. And I think production-wise, you could see they kind of worked out the kinks because, as you mentioned, it wasn't their regular crew doing it. So I think they probably accomplished their goals as far as what they want to do moving forward. But you're exactly right. The show absolutely would have been better at the Performance Center where there was a lot more familiarity with all of these people. I will say that I thought it was a largely good show, particularly the middle portion of the show. Kalani Jordan won the ladder match to become the first NXT Women's North American Champion. Beat Sol Ruka, Lash Legend, Fallon Henley, Jada Parker, and Meechin. And the best way to describe it, that's how I described it last night, this was six great athletes recreating a ladder match. Like if you, if you went to Cirque du Soleil WWE and they were going to do a ladder match... 
and you had a bunch of great flips and athletics and everything, but it wasn't like a wrestling match. It was like they just moved from spot to spot to spot. There was no, you know, hit a spot, let it breathe, let the people see what happened. There was so much stuff going on, I couldn't even write it down. I just remember seeing like a bunch of flips and moves and, and everything. There was no and then music between those notes. Zilch and, uh, and Kalani won. And, you know, I did like that though. For what it was, it was good. We had Nathan Frazier and Axiom beat Carl Anderson and uh, Luke Gallows, which I thought was an excellent tag team title match. Just two different styles, but they made it work. And uh, Frazier and Axiom retain. And we'll see who the next challengers are Lola Vice and Shayna Baszler. Lola won NXT Underground. Uh, They worked so hard. And they were pouring sweat. And they were gasping for air. Because working a sh- a fake MMA fight, because of the way you have to work it, is significantly harder than working a fake pro wrestling match. Especially when you have to remember a bunch of spots, too. This wasn't exactly blood sport where you can chain your way through some of it. You could see them just dying. It was exhaustion. But they got through it. Shayna tripped over someone that she had murdered. Hit her head on the uh, metal steps, and then Lola took her to the ring, ground and pound for the ref stoppage. They did the deal where Shayna tried to tackle the referee afterwards because you didn't know she was out. It was very, very well done for what for what they were trying to do. Oba Femi beat Wesley and Joe Coffey to retain the North American title, which was a good match. They worked around Oba Femi great. Roxanne beat Jordan to retain the women's title, which I thought was a very good match. And then Trick beat Ethan Page in the main event, which was a very... Basic pro wrestling match. It was good. It wasn't great. Talk more about it after the break. Observer Live. Hey, you know, I've seen some stuff on the old internet of late. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hmm. It's damn internet. Mm-hmm. And people are bringing it up on the board here. People are blaming Ethan Page. What? For the uh, main event. Merely being a good match, but not like a great match or anything like that. Oh, come on. And uh, I want to I want to say something here, okay? Do it. All right. Learn them. Well, remember a while ago, we were doing some Observer Radio show, and we were talking about some match involving Trick. And Dave said, well, you know, Trick's just not very good right now. Something like that. Something along those lines. And then, you know, the internet had to go crazy that Dave, how dare he say that Trick's not very good right now. And then, you know, I think it might have been right before Trick won the title or something. I can't remember. But, you know, Trick did something and then, you know, kind of brought up, hey, look, I'm the champion or whatever. I, I, I don't remember all of it. I, I try not to pay attention to that stuff because I don't have room in my brain. I don't have enough room in my brain as it is. My brain is just too big. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So anyway... Here's the thing, okay? Uh-huh. Trick is, like, he's ridiculously over. Yeah. He's the most over guy in NXT. He's a great personality. He's a great talker. He's a big success for the brand. And I'm not going to... Reminds you you. I'm not going to sit here and say he's not very good. I don't want to go that far. But he's just... New. How long has he been? He hasn't for? been doing this for very long. No. So maybe there's a nicer way of explaining this than to say he's not very good. There is. But let me tell you something about almost everybody ever in this business, with the exception of Kurt Angle and The Rock. That actually probably is it. <laughs> like, no one is any good when they start. Jack Briscoe. You're just not any good when you start. Jack Briscoe's different because you know what? The Jack Briscoe's style, he didn't have to do much well, from hey. what he was doing before he was a wrestler. Well. But if you take a, a gymnast, and Logan Paul, he's pretty good from day one, but that's different well, because Logan Paul, he had the benefit of, okay, in your first match, you're going to go and you're going to practice for like nine weeks bad buddy. With, with the greatest workers we can find. And so that doesn't even count either. Okay? So... Trick has not been doing this all that long. And, you know, some people go, well, you know, it's been three years. Well, you know what? Yeah, it has. It's not like it used to be, okay? How many matches he had in three years, Uh okay? Actually, you know a guy who who was basically great from day one was Braun Breaker. He's another one. Hell, yeah. You know, but fact of the matter is, 
And I've had people say Rocky sucked when he started. So anyway, it wasn't even so much. I should I should rephrase that. It's they not so much Flex that Cavana. it's not so much that at the very beginning Rock was like great, but but it was what the, the very beginning. You know, people looked at the Rock and they go, "That guy's going to be a massive star." You're over explaining okay. all this. I am, because people are under explaining what happened with that match. Oh, match not great. Ethan Page must suck. No, <laughs> yeah, Ethan Page true. is a very good worker. Uh huh. They had 12 minutes to do a match. That's how much time they had. And they they kept it simple because Trick is fairly new. And I thought for what it was, it was a good match. Was it a great match? No. Was it anyone's fault? No. Did something go wrong for it to only be good? No. It was, what do you want out of 12 minutes with Trick Williams? It was fine. Look at the matches he's had, for heaven's sakes. Look at his best matches. He has been either paired with or going against a incredible athlete in Carmelo Hayes. He had a great, well, I don't know about great, but he had a notable match with Ilya Dragunov. Well, what's Ilya Dragunov known for? Putting himself out there and making guys look great and really building up his opponent. And he absolutely did that. Braun Breaker was another opponent of Trick Williams, and a lot of that revolved around tables matches. So how much can you really learn? A lot of that is just learning. Again, it's learning stuff for the next level. Who else has he, you know, wrestled in that time? So when you look at it, it's like, you know, Noam Dar. He actually had a really good match against Noam Dar. What's Noam Dar known for? Looking great. And he's going to have great matches probably with Ethan Page and what's probably going to be a really good storyline between those two. So to call Ethan Page like some bum or look at him that way or to forget about the fact that Trick Williams still has a lot to learn in this thing is just being silly and being reactionary and complaining and bitching without standing back really looking at it and going, yeah, you know what? If these two guys do this match next year, I bet you it's a lot better just because they're going to be more familiar with each other and Trick's going to be a year better. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.